Well, tonight, we shall be speaking with an elder statesman, a chieftain of the APC, a former Senate president, and uh, a former chairman of the uh, President's Electoral Amendment Committee put together by President Buhari, a chieftain of the APC from the Southeast region, Senator Ken Inamani, is our guest tonight on the program. Uh, he's in Abuja for us. Thank you so much, Senator Inamani, and it's good to see you. Thank you for uh, talking to us tonight. Um, we shall be talking on some internal party matters and, of course, national issues. And let's uh, perhaps begin with the ongoing APC registration and revalidation exercise. But I would like you to listen again to Chief B.C. Akande's comments on the exercise and the state of, of affairs of the APC. Take a listen to him, and I'd like to get your reaction to it, Senator Inamani. A caretaker executive committee for a political party is an abnormality. If not carefully controlled and expeditiously managed, most aberrant authorities end up in contempt and disgrace. For this reason, I want to urge the present APC Critical Executive Committee to resist all temptations of C type syndromes. Chibiza Akonde has criticized the Kiateka committee, and he also described the ongoing registration exercise as wasteful. How do you react to that, Senator Namani? With due respect to our uh, revered gentleman, Bisi Akonde, I would like to start by relying on the section on Article 9 subsection 4 of the APC Constitution because the caretaker committee wants to commit the party to strict adherence to the stipulations of the, uh, the grand norm of the party and that is the party constitution. So article 9 subsection 4 describes or uh, elucidates the issue of membership and registration. The party is supposed to review its register every six months. Strict compliance will make the party a party to reckon with. And most people who are in the caretaker committee, I don't see any of them as job seekers. We want to, we are charged by the highest body of the party, which is the NEC, other than uh, uh, the national convention, the highest body after national convention is the NEC. NEC has reconstituted the, the caretaker committee to reposition the party. So the caretaker committee is an intervention uh, mechanism to get the party to adhere strictly. I, com I continue to emphasize the work, strict compliance to the constitution. So the registration is in accordance with Article 9, subsection 4, in fact, it's on page 8 of the Constitution. So, uh, I, I think, uh, the, the Chief, uh, we are not trying to uh, overstretch our limitations or our authority, but we are trying to follow strictly what the Constitution says. And we want to bring the party to observe every uh, uh, statement, every issue in the Constitution, party members should be familiar with it and obey it. Because if we obey it, it's the same thing as we talk about rule of law. A country that does not follow rule of law uh, it becomes, uh, end up in anarchy. So it looks to me that uh, what the caretaker is doing is in strict compliance with the constitution of the party. So Chibisa Kande was also worried about um, the what he described as a seat tight syndrome because the expiration of the caretaker committee was uh, sometimes end of last year, but for some reason the neck also increased it. But for those who are afraid about uh, the future of the party, let me ask you, and poignantly so, to Senator, what is the future of the APC after Buhari's presidency? That is, I think, Mr. President understands the need for leaving a strong legacy. And uh, I, I understand from all his actions so far that he wants to leave a strong party. 
long after he has left office, that the party will continue to grow and grow and grow. And to do this, he wants us to start from the foundation. We're not registering, it's not the first time the party is doing registration and revalidation. Well, you know that since the last time they did it, there have been those who were 18 years uh, and would like to uh, participate, and there are those that have passed on. We have to update the register. As I said, it's in accordance with the Constitution. And any person being afraid of people overstaying might be a little bit of a mistake, because if you look at the 13 member, uh, members in, the, in that very committee, None of them can be described as somebody, an applicant. We, we have very distinguished Nigerians that constitute that very committee. And we are doing all we can to reposition the party. Because the party was actually uh, more of, uh, I, I wouldn't like to say the word shambles, but the situation where the party was not following the rules as specified in, in our own constitution. Nobody wrote it for the party. the party. The constitution was prepared by the members of the party. So the caretaker, the job is enormous. The constitution of the party itself is being reviewed. So many things to be done. We can't finish all. And we are working expeditiously to make sure that we uh, keep the time. But uh, th th there's so much to be done. So the, the, the extension is highly commendable by NEC. And uh, we are working hard. For instance, after this registration, we'll be talking about congresses. After congresses, now we move into convention. And that will put the party on a very strong footing. So you're asking what is the fate of APC after the, the uh, Mr. Uh, uh, President is, is no more in office. Yes, it may be difficult to find a candidate of his caliber because he comes into election with almost 10 million votes. In advance, it's called, it has called followers. We will look hard and see if we can get people or somebody in that category. You know, but I, it will not be easy. However, he is trying to lay a strong foundation, and that is this registration and revalidation exercise that, that is going on now. So it is meant to straighten the party and make it more attractive, to attract the youth, the women, and the elderly. So I think. If the party is attractive enough, it has future. And at the beginning of that very attractiveness is having a solid party registered at all words. That is the oh. issue. Oh, so right. any person be, being afraid of people overstaying in office, I don't think uh, that fear should be erased. I have about two questions in that regard uh, before we go into our first break. Um, there are ideas of a mega party uh, which some uh, eminent Nigerians are putting together and one of what is said is that the APC has failed Nigerians and so they're trying to put up an alternative so the question here uh, Senator is how do you convince Nigerians to get their trust after President Buhari gets out of office I, I mean considering what for example one of my guests on the program Dr. Baba Ahmed said he said if APC and PDP are allowed to go on in the country to lead the country we might not have a country in the next 10 years I'm, I'm no more hearing him Okay, if you can hear me now, uh, the premise of what I'm laying is uh, what one of those, uh, the eminent Nigerians who are planning what they call the mega party. I don't know if Senator can hear me now. And they say that there is a failure of leadership in the country. So talking about when President Buhari leaves office, how your party hopes to convince Nigerians to gain their trust when someone like Dr. Baba Ahmed says, if you allow APC and PDP to, uh, to go on, that we may not have a country in the next 10 years? Well, uh, as you probably know, uh, we have heard about mega party uh, in, the, in the past. But as I said, the foundation we are laying down to make a PC very attractive and accessible, I think that will uh, is the beginning of creation of that very enthusiasm uh, some people are showing now in joining APC. 
I'm talking especially in my own southeast zone. Uh, before this time, APC was started in 2013, I believe. Uh, people in my area did, did not take it very seriously. But right now, there's a barrage, a whole number of people showing interest in joining APC. Is the, is the party of growth, of all the parties, is the party of growth. So I don't want to, uh, the, I wouldn't want to describe any person's prediction as a, be a prophet of doom, but I, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, it's the way we make our bed, we rely on it. If we make the party very attractive, people would like to join and participate politically and, and not run away and allow people that are questionable characters to, 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 to run the party. Because if we make the party attractive, as we are trying to do now, I have no doubt in my mind that a number of people, men and women and youths, will show interest in joining and, and participate. In what you call participatory democracy. Every person to participate. And uh, uh, the, the president it describes it as a bottom-up. That bottom-up approach, I think, is, is, is a very good theory. And we want to put it into practice by allowing all, all members, everybody. Uh, I, I think I see a party as a church or mosque, any person coming to pray to God or to Allah, we have no authority to tell the person to go away. So people registering to join a party, there's nothing wrong with it. So we should make it accessible. Let every person who is interested come and register. But if the person says he wants to be a treasurer, and we don't know the person's address, he has no second address, nothing, we will question him, you may run away, you may disappear with our money. But membership, yes, you can be a member. So we, right. the way we make parties, is, it doesn't have to be APC alone. The way we create our parties, people will be interested to participate. All right. Now, see more issues. Uh, electoral amendment matters are there. The issues of our uh, the, the national discourse on how we can get the country out of this security nightmare. But we take a break, and when we come back, we we'll probably will get your views and your experience on some of these issues. Stay with us, Senator Namani. We'll be right back, everyone. We we'll take a moment. And we'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's get back to our conversation with the former Senate president and um, the uh, chieftain of the APC in the Southeast region, of course, uh, chairman of the President Buhari's uh, Committee on uh, Electoral Amendment, Senator Ken Inamani, who's been speaking with us from Abuja. Thank you, uh, Senator Inamani, for your time tonight. Uh, talking about, uh, before I get into the matter of uh, electoral amendment and some other national issues, uh, talking about uh, fairness and justice in your party, let's talk about the issues of zoning and 2023. 2023, your party, I mean, as a leader now, uh, from the Southeast region, what do you think will be fair in terms of consideration of who become Nigeria's president in 2023 or who fl uh, fly the flag of the party in 2023? Uh, Shewa, I think it's, uh, it's supposed to be a collective decision of the party. Not, no one person can just impose himself on the party. Remember, we say that we are returning the party to constitutionality. We believe in the constitution of the party. Uh, Southeast is an integral part of Nigeria. In fact, Southeast zone of Nigeria uh, contributes enormously. Uh, I dare say more than most other zones, because if you notice the type of investments made by people from Southeast, it's what you call direct investment, not portfolio investment. Portfolio investment is where you buy shares and stocks in companies. If you are going, you carry your certificates and go. Whereas direct investment is the one where you have physical structures, industries, buildings, and the rest of it. There's no part of Nigeria you go to. You don't see physical structures from the, by the people of Southeast. Either developing of a market, or starting from the, the scratch. If you show them a bush, they'll, they'll clean it. If you go back there in the next two, three months, you see a lot of difference. So Nigeria, people from Southeast stands to benefit more 
if there's stability and progress in Nigeria, because they are willing to compete and compete favorably. So I think those that, that are saying uh, it may be dangerous to allow Southeasterners to participate, remember we're talking about participatory democracy. All the zones should participate. And uh, if based on merit, or zoning, you call it zoning. Uh, it, it's not a, a decision to be taken by only one person. Uh, I think South East deserves to be considered equally because uh, if you talk of true Nigerians, I believe that those of them from South East are true Nigerians. I then give you an example. If you go through some streets in the South East, you hardly can see any building owned by other people other than Nibos. But if you go through streets here in Abuja, Kano, Kaduna, Joss, everywhere, you see physical structures, very elegant structures. That's permanent investment. That's what I call direct investment. So any person behaving that way yeah. shows belief. All right. So in the because I need to Nigeria. get your views on some other national issue. But I'd like you to probably just shoot straight on this one. Has President Buhari, since oh. getting into office, has it been fair to the people of the Southeast in your party and as a region in general? Just a, a, a very brief comment on that. Well, I drove from uh, Owere to Enugu two days ago. I came back to Abuja just yesterday. The, the Enugu Porhakot Road that has remained a death trap, if you, if you have seen it yourself and see the, the, the quality of construction going on, they use granite stones where they think the soil is bad. They are building it to last for at least 50 years. Then take the second Niger bridge, which is done by this President Buhari's administration. It has been on the drawing board for a long time. At times it's in the constitution, at times it's out. Take Enugu Airport, for instance. It, it appeared in about four different uh, 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 appropriation bills. Passed, but it was never built until this time. So infrastructurally, although it has not been widely publicized, APC has done tremendously well in the Southeast. Still going on. All right. Second so, Niger, Bridge, and some... Uh, go ahead. All right. So I'd like to... Yeah, I, I get your point there. Uh, let me get two points which are very critical now uh, because Nigeria is facing a major security challenge and is in perhaps every aspect of the country, every region of the country. So a lot of people will talk about restructuring as a solution to some of this problem. And they are wondering why the government of the APC under President Buhari are not deemed fit in ensuring that that restructuring happen. From your experience, you've been in government as a Senate president. Do you think it is urgent for Nigeria to consider restructuring? And how do we go about it? Well, I think uh, I participated in the 2014 conference. This issue of restructuring viewed very prominently. And the pieces of recommendations were made. Uh, the only thing was that the, the pre former president, uh, good luck, Jonathan, did not start the areas you should have started, that they didn't require so much of uh, uh, national assembly involvement. I think if the present administration can clean up that very document and revisit it, because there are so many useful suggestions in that very uh, uh, piece of uh, document, I think it will help the country. Because it depends on the definition of restructuring. So many people interpret it in different ways. You know, uh, uh, it's like uh, uh, fiscal federalism. Where there's no section of Nigeria that doesn't have one natural endowment or the other. If we emphasize various regions utilizing the, the, their own natural endowment, I think it will make a lot of sense. Restructuring is not bad if properly defined and every person understands it doesn't mean breaking up of the country. Remember that there was a time Nigeria depended on Grand North proceeds. That we have oil now doesn't mean that, that there are some other areas in, uh, in the north where you have gold and all kinds of mineral deposits. It should be also looked into. 
That is what I mean by every region, every state in Nigeria. It may not be on equal uh, quantity. Has something that All can right. help the, the country grow. So I support the idea of revisiting the issue of restructuring and going to that recommendations made by the 2014 uh, uh, National Conference. I participated in it and we made recommendations. Mm. Senator Kenny Ramani, always a wealth of your experience. It's always a pleasure to tap into it. And we really appreciate you coming on the program because at some point we will really need you to come back because you are an expert in electoral amendment and we'd like you to talk about that uh, in the fullness of time. But thank you so much, former Senate President, for talking to us right here on China's television. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. That's our conversation with the former Senate President, Kenny Namani. And that's our show for today, everyone. And thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye.